changed her life. She moved to another country. She moved and she founded her own company. And now she helps people internationally and online. People and, and companies as well as individuals and as team, as teams to perform better and to, to be better colleagues and to work better. When I asked her what was the thing that, in the case, she remembered and she was more proud of, she told me about her own and old colleague that from time to time drops her an email and say, I still remember what you told me some, so, so long, long time ago. And this is what defines Carmen. She's not looking for a short term big impact, but she's looking for an inevitable stamp in our lives. That's why I, I invite you to switch on your phones, first of all, to be present, to, to listen to her, and to really take what she's going to tell us as a gift, to, to take home, back home forever. So please, welcome Carmen on stage. for you to close your eyes for a moment 
and if it's not comfortable to close your eyes, you can look somewhere down on the floor, somewhere where you are not distracted. And I invite you for a moment to notice how you are feeling right now. If you are tired after parking, if you are warm, or if you feel cold, just be aware of whatever is present in your body right now. And also be aware of what's present in your mind. Notice if you have a lot of thoughts. <coughs> Notice if you think about last night or about travel today or exploring the city. Just be aware of what's there for you now. And I invite you now to leave all these thoughts and all these sensations in the body to be there as a radio playing in the background and to be aware of the fact that you are breathing. You don't need to change your breath in any way. Just notice that you are breathing. Notice how the air comes into your body and how the air comes out of your body. We breathe always and so rarely we are aware of it. With each breath, knowing that you are more present, you are coming to this moment. And whenever you feel present and connected to this moment, and connected to yourself. I invite you to set an intention for these minutes that we are going to spend together. How you want to show up during this moment. How you want to be. <coughs> what you want to take with you. Maybe also what you want to offer to the others. And whenever the intention is set, slowly at your own time, I invite you to bring small movements in your body and open your eyes and your, whenever you feel ready. I'm, I'm curious to hear what's, what's in this room right now this morning, who wants to say a word or anything that is present for you right now? <coughs> How do you feel? Start. Well being. Peace of mind. Peace of mind, yes. Openness, Openness yes. Silence. Silence, yeah. Space. Space. Relaxation. Relaxation. What's important about tuning in? What do you feel that was important for you in this minute? Learn to focus. Focus, yes. Learn to focus. Harmony with others. Harmony with others, yeah. Yeah, it's very important to tune in because we rush from one thing to the other. There are so many exciting things going on. And we all want, all want to take it all. And many times we find ourselves in a conversation, in a meeting, thinking about the previous conversation, thinking about the next, and losing what's happening now. Is this picture familiar to you? <laughs> Being at work, think, oh my God, I wish I was sleeping. And being in bed, turning all around, about what's gonna be tomorrow at work, or what happened today, and how you didn't succeed to do what you wanted, and so on and so forth. Is it familiar? For sure, for me, many times. Anybody else? Yes. I know a friend, not what I know. A friend, yes. <laughs> there is always a case of a friend. That means you have a very good connection with that friend, yeah. Or is this image familiar to you? So many tasks, so much information coming in. 
wanting to do it all and feeling squeezed. Does this ever happen to you or to your friends? <laughs> yeah, because nowadays we are overwhelmed by information. We are overwhelmed by exciting things. We are overwhelmed by 850 people that would like to talk with all of them. And yet, it feels tough sometimes. Well, in old days, it was quite easy. We had a typewriter, we had a lamp, a, uh, a landline phone. There were not so many distractions. Do you remember those times? A book maybe, reading, and not being interrupted. Well, Twitter curve, and this has been made 11 years ago. Like, in 1980, we had about two hours between interruptions. And with the pagers and cell phones and mail, and there is no Facebook yet here and WhatsApp, here there is almost no time, there is almost no time between interruptions. In, sorry, between interruptions. And this was 11 years ago. How is it right now? How much time do we have between interruptions? Most of the time, so we get into minus because there are many coming on top of each other. Our desk sometimes looks like this. In the happiest case, it's just messier. Just messier. <laughs> Yeah, what to say about our mind and our to-do list? Is this familiar to you? Yeah. At least for me it is. And we think that maybe doing more things <coughs> in the same time it helps. Do you remember those job ads when you say you have to be good at multitasking? <coughs> yeah, well research shows again that multitasking is not possible. Actually, the brain it switches between tasks, and we lose a lot of things in between. So we try to be in a meeting and to send a lot of texts. How many of you, while being in the conference, was texting or Facebooking or wherever? Yeah, sending some emails, reading the news because you didn't have time because the program was packed. Well, I can assure you that you missed either the news or what's, what was told during the conference. <coughs> I will not go into multitasking because uh, it's a wonderful topic, yet it's not a topic of today. Yet by not being present and multitasking, it's one way of not being present. Many things happen and not the best, unfortunately. One cost is that reduces productivity. If you try to write an email and to talk with a colleague, the results are not always the best. I have a colleague of mine who told me that he was talking with his wife on the phone, writing a check for the bank. Instead of $180, he wrote $18,000. And the bank called him and are you sure you want to transfer this money? And he said, which money? I didn't write that. Yes, you did. And then his wife said, why you didn't do what you promised me? But I did. Well, actually, he didn't remind. He didn't remember. Because he was trying to manage more things in the same time. And his productivity dropped in both places. One more thing that happens, the quality. Writing instead of 180, 18,000, which is not a big deal to write some zeros, but yet reduces creativity. When I heard openness and space this morning, but when we don't have that space, how can creativity come into play? How this can happen to us? <coughs> Also increases stress. How many of you felt under pressure that you have to attend everything? You have to hear everything. You have to talk with as many people as possible. You have to network. Not losing 
a moment. Yeah, we all want this. And it's tempting. And it's exciting. And yet our body feels, and our mind feels. But it's not always possible. And what I find the biggest cost of not being present is the fact that it increases this connection and leads to poor relationships. And if you don't believe me, we'll make an exercise together. Because with all the devices, with all the possibilities that we have, with social media and so on and so forth, we have the opportunity to be more connected. And yet, we become more disconnected. And Alicia kindly asked you to turn on, uh, to turn off the phones. And now you have a chance to use your phones. And we'll do an exercise together. <coughs> I'll invite you first to think about your age. And if your age is 28, come up to two, 2 and 8 and 10. And remember that number. Yes. Yes, yeah. So think of your age and sum up. And afterwards, take your cell phone in your hand. And for the moment, make a conscious choice not to think about your phone. <laughs> but think about one of your biggest dreams. Take a moment and think about one of your biggest dreams. Something that is really, really important for you. Something that you really, really want to achieve in this life. Does everyone have something in his or her mind? Okay. And now I invite you to find a partner, and if it's possible to have a partner that you didn't meet before, that would be fantastic. So if you pair up in two, and let me know, raise your hand if you don't have a partner. Everybody has a partner? Okay, so who's not having a partner? Alex and. Oh, okay. Is there anyone else without a partner? Just raise your hand if you don't have a partner. Okay, it seems we all have a partner. Now, you have to take turns. The one who has the smaller number will start and you will share with your partner your biggest dream. Tell about it with all details, with all your heart. And your partner is invited and has the chance now, the only chance during this minute, to check your emails, to check your Facebook, to check everything. Please do so. I am not messy, I'm giving you a chance to socialize <laughs> while listening to the other person. Okay, you have 90 seconds and then I will ring the bell. We'll keep about 10 seconds. Wait a second. Okay, let's wait. Uh, uh, let's have a fair chance. Okay, guys. So 
It's like a very, very super short memory. And of course, I didn't, I, I wasn't able to remember my email. Yes. Either. Yeah, thank you. I've seen a hand here. Yes? I was hurting my brain to share <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so it is kind of what's here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not much productivity, focus, yeah. quality, a bit stressing, frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can see one more hand there. I found that um, one sense was more dominant than the other, so the, the seeing and the hearing, my seeing was more dominant. Yes. And I, it's almost as though my ears just shut down. Yeah. I couldn't work the two effectively yeah. in parallel. Yes. Yeah, and this is happening, and many times, we do this unconsciously. How many times you are writing an email and a colleague comes and asks your help and you keep on typing or reading and answering or eating and uh, trying to answer or to write or there are so many other cases. Or even in restaurants, you see people having dinner? It's strange for most of us, yet we all kind of do no. A lot of us is not necessarily the phone. The phone was an example because we most of us have a phone with us. Yet many times it happens that we try to do more things at the same time. I had another <laughs> colleague saying that you know that feeling when uh, say read a book or newspaper and say hi honey I really love you bye but you don't even pay attention to honey who goes and what you say. <laughs> And again, it's not the same case for all of us, but many times we, we find ourselves with the best intentions, trying to do more things at the same time, and yet losing the moment. My invitation now is to actually find another partner. And this time, and please, let's keep silence until everybody's ready. And this time I invite you, again the same rule, the one of the lowest number starts. And I invite you to tell your partner your biggest dream. And your partner, please listen. Look at the person. Listen to your heart, with your heart, with your eyes, with your whole body. Okay? So we find a new...
And I will give you an example now. And the sound, it's not maybe perfect, but have a look what's happening when, when people are present. Oh, sorry.
And I invite you to really think about this commitment and to do something for yourself. Because mindfulness, as John Kabat-Zinn said, is the awareness. The awareness that arises from paying attention on purpose in the present moment in a non-judgmental way. And mindfulness is the lifestyle, as Alicia said in the beginning. And I will leave you with this image, which is from Focus Eyes. And here, as you can see, for me, it looks like life. It's, sometimes the seas are calm, sometimes the seas are rough. And we are all in boats. We need presence to be able to navigate the waves, to be able to support each other, to move forward. And the presence is always in us. And Mount, you can see there, there is a mount, a mountain. And that may be our groundness, our wisdom, our own presence that is inside. Because leaders, as you know, are those who have a strong presence, who walk into the room, who talk to you, and you feel heard. So I invite you to remember to wake up the leader within you, to listen to yourself and to listen to the others, because we all deserve that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carmen, for giving us this gift. That's a promise, something to take back home and start right from now to, to be better every day. So as a piece of appreciation, I will have this present for you. And your certificate. Certificate. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At, at the back of the, the slide here, you have contact details for Carmen, so you can contact her for any more information you may need. And also there is a, a piece of paper with it, and you signing the piece of paper, you will have the slides at the, at the back of the room, yeah? Yes. And now uh, she will be waiting for yes. you. I will uh, actually have the paper and having it here. I will give it to you and you can sign if you want and I can send you the slides if you if you need or if you have any questions or anything. Please contact me and there are some business cards also outside. So feel free to, to approach me or if you have any questions. Thank you very much for being present today. Thank you.